Hello, hello, hello. Today we are going to show you how you can personalize your car by making your own seatbelt covers. So we're starting with two pieces of fabric that are 7 inches by 11 inches and placing them right sides together. Next you're going to take and start clipping it and this just helps prevent the fabric from sliding around. Um, I also like to mark with the clips where to leave an opening because you don't want to sew all four of the sides because then you can't turn it right side out. So now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to sew it. It is up to you um, what kind of seam allowance you want. Personally I used a half an inch seam allowance and once again you do want to leave a couple inches of an opening so that way you can turn it inside out with ease and not rip any of the stitches. You can of course use any fabrics you want, but we were going for a princess theme for my mom's car, so we chose that one. As an optional step, you can serge the edges. Um, I have been trying to get over my fear with my serger, and so I decided to go ahead and serge the edges. Um, also because I didn't know how this kind of furry fabric was going to react. It was shedding all over the place and so I was kind of worried that it was going to come apart. So I figured, you know what, better safe than sorry and I get some practice with my serger which is never a bad thing. So now we are going to go ahead and flip it right side out and once you're done poking out all of the corners you can use your finger or tool um, then you want to smooth it out on your workspace to make sure that it is laying correctly. So now we are just going to take and top stitch just the short ends or uh, wherever you left your opening. I would prefer, um, I prefer to leave them rather on the short ends. I figured that would be easier and, um, but you can do it however you want to do. So now that we are done top stitching, we are moving on to the next step and that is measuring our Velcro or whatever we're using to secure it. So I have both pieces there and I'm going to take my scissors and just cut after measuring. This is a loose measurement. You can of course do a more precise measurement with a ruler, but this was easier for me and I was trying to get it done quickly. So most importantly, you want the fuzzy side of the Velcro to be on the liner. Okay, so this way, when it comes across the top side, you don't want the Velcro to tear it apart. So my method for sewing on Velcro is I get as close as I possibly can and I end up creating a box around it. So I will either start at the top and go across the width and then down or I'll start going down on the outside then sew from right to left to the inner uh, the inner length and then I will sew back up and go down. This is the easiest way uh, for me to be able to do it and to keep it secured um, and this acts like its own top stitching of course, to give it a more professional look, um, you will want to match your thread to the fabric. If you're, if it's not fuzzy like mine, uh, match it to the fabric on the outside. But since mine was rather fuzzy, then I was able to match it to both. So now we are going to put the hook side of the Velcro. So on the left hand bottom side, is where you want the fuzzy side and on the top right side you is where you want to put the hook. So you want them to be on opposite sides and um, I prefer this better because then I know that the jaggedy edges will not ruin the nice fabric on top. And so now we're just going to go ahead and top stitch. 
When I did this one, I wanted to keep it secure, so I did across the short end first before doing the outer edge. And this way, I was able to keep it taut, and this is what it looks like when it's done. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to stay tuned for the next video that's all about how to make reusable paper towels.